So welcome to our next lesson um, in level three mechanics uh, on circular motion. In this particular case, vertical circular motion. So thinking about, say, your David um, trying to vanquish Goliath, uh, if you swing a, um, a ball on a string above your head, like that, okay, maybe a lasso, and the string breaks, what's going to happen to that ball? It's going to travel course in a tangent. That means there has to be an inward force that is required for circular motion to actually occur. So sometimes I'm running late for school and I forget uh, my plate of pop tarts which I've had for breakfast and I place the place on top of my car. What happens if I take a sharp turn right and why is that? Well, it's going to basically, the Pop-Tarts are going to travel in a straight line, okay, as a tangent. And the reason for this is happening is what we're going to explore today. So I don't know if you're all big fans of the, um, the spring show, but one of the uh, exciting um, uh, activities I like to do is the Galvatron. Um, in the 1950s, that was known as a rotor. Okay, so what essentially happens is that the, um, the Galvatron spins around and then um, the floor is actually removed and you're actually stuck um, to the side of the Galvatron. So what's actually happening here? Well, think about it. If you swing a ball on a string uh, in a vertical circle, okay, coming towards you in a way, where is the uh, string most likely to break and why? Okay, it's most likely to break at point C, and that's due to the effect of the force of gravity. So in terms of centripetal force, um, for an object to basically follow a curved path, there has to be a force pulling it towards its center. Um, it's not really a force that shows up in a free body diagram, which you would have looked at in level two, um, say like the force of gravity or resistance or friction or tension force, but it's more like a net force that's required to actually uh, allow circular motion to occur. Okay, so if the object is indeed in circular motion, then the net force has to equal the, um, the centripetal force, which we explored in the last lesson. So in terms of this, this vertical circle that we were looking at, um, when you make a vertical circle, the net force at all points must equal uh, this centripetal force because if it doesn't, it's not going to move in a, uh, a circular motion. Okay, um, this is the case also for the horizontal circles. The main difference now is that um, weight or the force of gravity is now a factor. Okay, so let's focus uh, on our a vertical circle uh, and what's happening at the top and also what's happening at the bottom. Okay, so at the top, the uh, the force acting on that particular ball is going to equal the centripetal force and that's going to be the sum of the tension force acting on it and also the force of gravity. And at the bottom, it's going to be, uh, the net force is going to be the centripetal force, of course, which will equal the tension force, this time subtracting from the force of gravity. Okay, and now if we add some numbers to the, um, the kind of example, so if the centripetal force is 20 newtons and the force of gravity uh, on an object is 5 newtons, so at the top, using the equations we looked at in the previous slide, then the tension force will have to be 15 newtons, and at the bottom, the tension force will actually have to be 25 newtons, 10 newtons greater than at the top. Okay, so what does this all mean? Well, if you're thinking about the velocity, it needs to be fast enough so that the um, resistance force is greater than zero newtons, then what you're gonna have to have is um, the centripetal force obviously acting on the, the carriages in the loop to loop. Okay, and if R equals zero, then the centripetal force has to equal the force of gravity. 
and we've already got an equation for the centripetal force being mv squared divided by r, and we also have an equation for gravity, k Newton's um, second law, so mass times gravity. The masses cancel out, so therefore the minimum velocity required in order for the loop to loop to occur is going to be the square root of g. Okay.